McAllister still going strongly in the closing minutes. Great run by Kevin McAllister! What a goal that is! Delivery's good, there's Hagen! Now McGrath, he scored! It Stokes on a hat-trick! Goal number three for Anthony Stokes! Oh, Austin, saw off Robertson and delivered! Sibold scores! That's the goal! That's the moment! Samuel off and running again. Is it going to be the hat-trick? You know what it is! This is Falkirk Daft. Welcome once again to Folk at Daft, your unofficial podcast dedicated to everything to do with the Bairns. As we look back at our effort as going for five, the world's record-breaking Challenge Cup winners, as we took on Partick Thistle on Friday night, and the quest for five continues. Um, we also look to our next league encounter against Clyde in the company of Paul from the official Clyde podcast. We'll have more random encounters with Falkirk players as well on the way. But first, let's introduce a man who once played a game of table tennis with Camila Pongo. That might not be true. It's the ginger god of pod himself. It's Mr. Ross Wayne. Good evening, sir. How are we? Uh, Ross, I'm, I'm just moaning there. I've just had my car in for a service. You know when you put, when you put in your car for an MOT and you're waiting for that dreaded call or I put in for the service. Oh my god! New brake discs, new brake pads. The suspension had come away. Um, obviously, plus the service cost, air conditioning, one thousand pounds. Time for a new motor, buddy. It's time. Oh, for- it's getting that way. It's get. Do you know what? The next time it goes in for it goes in for its MOT in January. I'm just hoping that kind of stems the tide. It's all a hundred thousand miles in the clock anyway. But oh, I'm just gutted. Absolutely gutted. Been yeah. a great week for a foot to be a football supporter, mind you. We had the Dunfermline game with Scotland one in, with yeah. England getting beaten in with a fantastic uh, game against Partick this on Friday. We did, and then Scotland got another decent result on uh, Saturday night as well. So yeah, exactly. All, all good. Yeah, no, it's been a cracking week for that. I know, I know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been a good week to be a Falkirk supporter, I would say. Uh, we got into a bit of chat. I wanted to talk about this, Ross, because after the hooligan element of the chair throwing at Dunfermline and what have you, a couple of weeks back, we got into chat about, uh, on our group chat, we got talking about uh, your favourite football hooligan movie. Oh, we did, didn't we? That was a good chat. Yeah. You know, I know you like to show the Stone Island, Ross, so this is your specialist subject. Um, so, well, what's your favourite football hooligan movie? I'd like to start having a wee chat about this. Oh, uh, do you know, I'm going old school. Do you remember ID? I see. Yeah. I, I, I'm with you on that one. I'm with yeah. you on that one. You cannot beat ID as a good one. Shadwell, Shadwell. Shadwell Army, the, the kennel. Just, it was just a proper 80s. Well, I think it was 80s. I'm sure it was 80s. Um, film in it, typically. Oh, 90s, mate. It was 90s. 90s. I could have sworn. Oh, there you go, then. So, no, listen, that was brilliant. There's been a few, though. Um, Green the, Street. Green Street was all right. The th- problem is it was Elijah Wood. And I just, I don't know, as convincing as everybody else was, it was Elijah Wood. And I just that did the set right. Um, yeah, you can't have Frodo Baggins as a footballer, no, really, can you? Really. I, I like the original. Do you remember the firm? The original one. Yeah, the newer one isn't bad. The newer one isn't bad, but the the original one's the better of the two, I think. Yeah, Football Factory. You seen that one? I have. Yeah, but then it's (laughs) it's Danny Dyer. Yeah, it's Danny Dyer. Always looking for a rock, mate. Always looking for a rock, that boy. But um, no, the 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 newer the newer firm wasn't too bad. It was um, the guys in Peaky Blinders plays the sort of top boy as it was. Yeah. You seen it, the newer one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that was not too bad. It's a bit of a it's it's the same story as the original one, just obviously a modern take on it. Yeah, yeah. So oh, listen, if you want to add to the conversation, we'll maybe stick this up a wee Twitter poll on Falkirk Daft on Twitter, uh, and we can get chatting about football hooligan movies because we all seem to like that after done fe- the events in Dunfermline. Another thing I'd like to chat about, Ross, briefly, is just obviously we've had an international break there. We were lucky enough that our club were playing. Um but you know, it comes back. To, it's a debate that goes on club versus country, right? Mm-hmm. And you know what you prefer. And it, I was chatting to my wife about this. Um, you know, she goes, "Well, what? Do you, you know, we were sitting watching the Scotland game. And it was just, it's a strange one, isn't it? You feel passion for your country, obviously, but yeah. at the same time, you watch Falkirk week in, week out. And she asked me, "What? Well, what? 
you know, is it club or country? What what do you prefer? And I had to, I had to say club. Especially, I think yeah. maybe it just depends on how your club's doing at the time. So if you're having a nightmare, like see the last forty few years with yeah. uh, when the Scott, but the Scotland have done quite well. Maybe the Yarsin country, but because we're doing so well as a club team at the moment, yeah. it, oh, it's, it's, not, it's always been club for me, mate. If I'm being honest, it's been. Yeah. Um, if you think about it, like, see, for the club element, you think about it every week. It's not like a, a once every quarter. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, there's some massive Scotland games and occasions, and they're brilliant. And I don't want to say it's not a, like it's not up there, because it really is. But if I, if Falkirk and Scotland were playing at the same time, I'm not going to lie. I'd bet the Falkirk game. Right, here's a question then. Would you rather see Falkirk win the <laughs> Premiership or Scotland win the World Cup? I'm going to say the Bairns because I care, I care, I invest more of my time and money and passion into the into club football. So I'd probably say Falkirk. I know the others who say Scotland winning a World Cup, but see as long as England don't win it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can live, I can live with that. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, question, though. Club versus country. It'd be interesting to see um, where people sit with that. So if you get in touch with us, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, Falk at Daft on Twitter, or you can get us on all the usual social media platforms. Because like we say, we, there's a big element of the Falk support that really follows Scotland as well. So it'd be interesting yes. to views on that. Um, mm. Because, yeah, it's 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 one for the ages, that. And I think, I think I'm more club. I, 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 kind of my realisation is I'm, I'm more club now. So I... I, I just think, see if it came down to it, if if the two t if the Falkirk and Scotland are playing at the same time, I'd I'd bet the Falkirk game. And I think don't yeah. get me wrong, don't get me wrong. If it was like if you're saying it's a Scotland World Cup final versus Falkirk versus Dumbarton, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it, it that would be a tough a tough thing <laughs> to pick between. But I think um, all in all, I'd probably pick the Bairns. Yeah, I think so. And uh, shout out to Stephen Kingsley, obviously former Bairn, getting called up into the squad um, this week with the amount of injuries. God knows what formation he's got to play <laughs> come come this week because we've got all our straight... Chi Adams, Lyndon Dykes both look as if they're not going to make it now. Uh, all the fullbacks are gone. Most of the centre half are gone, so it's going to be like 10 in midfield. I'd be like a Craig Levine special, but um, <laughs> yeah. all, all in midfield. Yeah, did I see that they were all out for dinner? Last night, and that's where this has all transpired. From. Oh, is that maybe what it is that they've all yeah, like the Rick Tom Kitchen? <laughs> 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 I know. Well, but, well, we'll wait and see what happens to Scotland. But good luck uh, to the boys uh, against Ukraine. Hopefully, we can get into that group A and get it up England, which is always great. Um, right, bits and bobs from the club. Um, we see the hour games been rearranged to Tuesday, the eighteenth of October, seven forty-five kickoff under the floodlights at the stadium. Good news is that's uh, October week, so a lot of people are off, including me and you, Ross. Ideal. Happy with that. Yeah, I know there's a few people who are probably going to be away on holiday and stuff, but um, I think it's a good call. There's probably going to be a large amount of kids that are maybe Norway, and yeah. it helps kind of get families along at the stadium as well. So, no, I think they've done they've done a good job uh, getting that in. Plus, it's in before the Dunfermline game as well. Um, so, oh, it could be nice to can imagine playing them in November and we're either above them or yeah. able to go above them at that game. Oh, it'd be, it'd be amazing. No, absolutely. Uh, so early start for us. We'll be in the from five o'clock then, Ross. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once you get your permission slip signed, or once we both get our permission slip signed. Um, shout out to the club as well. Strathcan Hospice, they launched the, the Great Big Falkirk Raffle. Um, I think everybody uh, knows someone or has been involved with Strathcan Hospice at some point. Um, so obviously, as a as a club, it's great that we're, we're getting behind this. Tickets are available to buy online um, right now. www.strathcanhospice.net slash event slash great big Falkirk raffle. Um, you'll find it on there. A thousand pounds cash and a hospitality package at the Bairns Christmas Eve fixture as well. A signed shirt and a ball as well for the the top prize and that. A lot of well, other good golfing prizes as well. Absolutely. Listen, you're right. Everybody does know someone, and uh, a shout out to. Uh, a guy, a massive Bairns fan who we, who most of us will probably know, Gary Hill. He's been getting a lot of treatment at Strathcar and um, I know he's, he's not quite finished with his treatment in general, but um, big shout out to Gary, still fighting and massive Bairns fan and fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. So get behind that if you can. Um, we've appointed um, Kenny McDonald as our new disability access officer. 
Uh, that's to, to help the club make an inclusive environment for all supporters and visitors. He's a lifelong supporter of the club. Don't know Kenny. Uh, he's been season ticket over for 20 euros. Any initiative like this that helps fans is obviously applauded by me and I'm sure yourself as well, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything that kind of helps bring everybody along to the games should they be should they want to do so uh, is a huge thing. So yeah, hopefully Kenny does really really well. And um, as you say, anything that kind of helps get people along to the stadium in a safe environment if that's what they need. Um, brilliant. Yeah. So let's get into the game, Ross. And every week in Falkirk Daft, we like to get a guest pundit on to talk about the game. We're obviously talking about the big game against Thistle and the Cup on Friday night. And that pundit this week is Mr. Andrew Welsh. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having us, John. Looking for I, it. I've got, some, I've got some big uh, boots to fill after Brian Stewart last week. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yep. and then uh, a couple of weeks ago, you had young Gavin McLaren on. So I... Yeah, so, I will. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, mate. I'm sure you'd be absolutely great. Listen, just we would like to find out from everyone, uh, first of all, what the, the story is about getting into the Bairns when your first game was, when when that all happened. Uh, well, it was a long time ago. Uh, it was, I think it was about 1985. Uh, uh, my dad was into football, but uh, I, I kind of persuaded him, and it was a midweek game, and we played Aberdeen, and we drew three each at Brovo. And I can mind, uh, I think it was my, my grandpa lifted me the turnstile and he says, I'll catch you at the other end, eh? And then uh, it was a great game and it was when Aberdeen were doing well with Sir Alec Ferguson and Wally Muller and that, eh? And then, as I say, that was just my first memories and I just got hooked on it. It's like a roller coaster once you're on it. Right, yeah, you, uh, you, don't, you don't have to tell us about it, Andrew. Um, and um, out with the Holy Trinity, uh, Andrew, you got, well, who's your favourite forward player? I've, I've decided to pre, you know, because we could all say either Latape, McAllister, or Stainrod. So that, now on, I've, I've decided, Ross, that we're just going to ask who's your favourite player out with, out with the Trinity? Yeah. Out with the Trinity. It's quite, it's quite an unusual. Uh, I, I like the Victor Lima. Uh, oh, hi. That's a good I like, I think, see, when the. Uh, Obviously, he didn't get much of the credit because Latape was in the team, but he was uh, the, the other Portuguese boy, Thiago Rodriguez. Eh? Uh, that was, in Mont- obviously, Pedro Montinho. Eh? That was a good era for us, too. Aye, no, no. I, I, I had a Lima as well. I thought he was a great, great player. I liked him in a very similar player, uh, Riera. I thought, I, I love those. I love those kind of... Unsung heroes, aren't they? Yeah, there's boys in bit of digging midfield, kind of like what Stephen McGinn does for us now, but they put dig in the midfield, they win the ball, they just pass it out, simple passes, but always kind of looking ahead. I, I love those kind of players, so I, I'm with you on Lima. I think uh, Tom Tyre must be up there as well. Aye, aye. He was hard as nails and he gave everything. Absolutely, absolutely. Great shout there as well. Um, i going to ask you this question because we've been asking for the last couple of weeks as well. Andrew, have you had a random encounter with a Falkirk player at any point? Aye, uh, uh, the first game of last season, I ran on the part and cuddled Carol Morrison when he scored. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, there we go. Can't get much better than that. Did you get lifted? No, I, I, I put my hamstring getting back over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, well, we'll get more of your random encounters a bit later on on the podcast. But let's talk about the big game on Friday night there. 2-0 to the Bairns. The ch- uh, mission to get five in the bag continues, as we said. Uh, Burrow and Oliver for us. One change, um, which was surprising, actually. We'll talk, to, talk about that. Is Paddy Martin came in for Nicky Hogarth. Ross, I thought there would be more changes for than that. I th- well, I thought so as well. Obviously, we talked about it last week on the basis that we would make a few changes, Thistle would make a few changes, but yeah, there was only the one. Um, I thought some of the other ones would have got some game time, Lawal, and um, who else did we say? We thought Kai Kennedy might have got a start as well, but do you know what? Fair play him, uh, McG- McGlynn. He's went for the win, and we got it, and we got it so, so well, so fair play, absolutely fair play. Andrew, were you surprised that it was uh, the goalkeeper that got uh, chopped? Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I was talking. There's a Wraith Rover supporter in my work, and he says that McGlynn done similar because obviously they've won the cup the last two years, and yeah. the only thing he done was change the goalie, he kept a strong team. He was all the way through the tournament. Eh? So I think that's he's where he believes in 
changing the goal, eh? That's that's interesting because maybe that you know you see that happen a lot with when European in European games there's usually a European goal <laughs> and you know. Uh, but I'd be interested to see if he continues with that, you know. And if, if Nick, well, you'd be able to tell if Nicky comes back in at the weekend, maybe that's what he does. He just wants to get the goal, he's a run out. Um, because it's obviously easier for players to get a run out than it is a goalkeeper, so that's interesting that he, that he does that. So we'll keep an eye out for that in the, in the further cup matches. Um, good to see Craig Sibbald uh, sitting in the stands, he wasn't far away from us, Ross. No, it was great. Uh, you know, I think he was there with his mum, uh, which is two big Falkirk fans, so absolutely brilliant. Good to see him back at the stadium. It's just a shame he's not got his, he had never had his boots on and he playing for us. But um, <laughs> do you know? I, I think I don't know if it was you that said it on on Friday night, John. Obviously, he, there's a change of manager at Tannadice now, and you wonder if that'll be maybe his longer term. I don't mean back at Falkirk, but you wonder no. if longer term future will be at Tannadice. He's good enough, so hopefully it is. But um, yeah, great to see Big Burns fan, and yeah, great to see him back. Yeah, an uninterested spectator was actually, I didn't know this, but um, uh, Neil Lennon was there. I didn't realise it was his son, Gallagher Lennon, that was on the bench for Thistle. Yeah, I never saw that until after the game as well, but yeah, oh, God, he, he didn't get on though, did he? His son. No, he didn't, he, no, he didn't get on, but he was, he was, it must have been the stands actually, cause it, but I didn't, I didn't see him at the game, he must have been back from Cyprus because of the international break. However, really interesting, I didn't know, his son's called Gallagher Lennon, and Liam Gallagher's son's called Lennon Gallagher. He's obviously done it that way, isn't he? Because, well, actually, they must be about the same age. Maybe not about the same age, like late, yeah, late teens. It's very random, though. Very random. It is random, yeah. I, I assume Neil Lennon wasn't in the Falker King, because that wouldn't have went well. Um, I don't think it would went well, depending on whatever end he was in, mate, I'll be honest with you. Maybe he just sat on the east side with no one else. <laughs> <laughs> potentially, potentially, but yeah, yeah. Um, aye, so looking at that start in 11, I thought I'd like to, I mean, you can't really argue with it now, but I'd like to see Lawal get a start, to be honest with you. His mum and his mum and sister was up. I met them outside. Oh, did you? Yeah, I saw them actually. I saw them running up after the match to, to see them because I, I passed them on my way out. I know it was funny, John, because I was coming down to the stadium and I was a wee bit later because uh, I was waiting on my oldest lassie finishing her work and uh, they, they asked me to take a photo of them outside the stadium, eh? And I said to them, uh, who are you here to support? Obviously, it must have been him or Burrow, eh? And she, uh, she says, we're here to watch and they were up for the weekend, eh? Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, that's good that the boys, um, they're getting up and they're obviously seeing their family again as well because... They said the, the, he's happy there and the changing room's happy, eh? so that's kind of a good sign as well. Absolutely, that absolutely, you know, and the, the club obviously take care. I mean, for a young boy his age to come up to like Scotland of you know foreign climes and getting put into a league that he's probably not familiar with, and, and set it's good to see that he's hopefully settling in up here. Um, and certainly do not in the part, which we'll we'll talk about a bit later on. Um, so yeah, I did not surprised that there was no changes. I, I'd like to see maybe McGuffey and Oliver, maybe a little bit as you know Lawal coming on. But our main man, um, Burrow, uh, started again, and he looked absolutely brilliant. He's he awesome. was, aye, uh, he's un- unplayable. The new, eh? he's just continued on for where he left off at Dunfermline. Eh? Yeah, um, I mean, full of pace. Drives at people, got his goal as well. Um, you know, great cross from McGuffey, good finish from him. Uh, I mean, he doesn't give defenders a minute, and I didn't think he kens at times what he's going to do with the boy. Just he's, 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 he gets the fans off the seat when he gets the boy, you, you think something's going to happen, eh? It's, it no, does seem like else I like John though, he's always got his head up, he's looking for a pass, like he's yeah. not just not just one dimensional. Oh, I better run it goal. And I'm not saying we've got somebody in the team who's like that. But he 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 looks up, he tries to pick a pass, and he well, did he not set up a couple of the chances as well that we had in the first half? Aye, I think great one. I think, yeah. I mean obviously we got Burrow got his goal really early on there in the first ten minutes, but before that, you were screaming at McGuffey when that chance fell to him. When the, right in front, you know, all he needed to do it was hit it first time. And, you know, he, he took a touch and then, ah, it was it was really frustrating. You know, he obviously hates his right foot. I think it just uses it for standing on at times, eh? But I mean, <laughs> but then I mean, he scored. 
for it Clyde last year. He scored with his right foot and it was a brilliant finish. So you're right, John. He should have just absolutely swung at it with his right foot and it probably would have went in. I know, I know, but um, I, 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 you just thought at that point, oh God, this could be one of those nights. But I mean, we looked so comfortable, so comfortable in that match. We could have won it about four or five. It, it, you, you, I mean, we had five chances in the first half alone. And then after uh, Gary Oliver scored, uh, I think we got another couple of chances at the end when we hit the post. And Craig Morrison, uh, Carl Morrison missed a chance. Eh? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was. We started so strong, and I think that's really set a precedent for the whole match, Ross. We did. We were at them from the first minute, and you could, when we scored, it was like, this has been coming. So it was very, very one-sided, especially the first half. I think the second half, they came in. They, they made, did they make a change or two at halftime? I think yeah, they did. Yeah. And um, you could tell... McCall was a wee bit ratted. You saw him on the bench as well. We were was, he had a clip, he had a clipboard. It looks like he was going to try and save, sign you up for save the children or something like that. They'd be better off trying to do that on Friday night than managing <laughs> the team anyway. But uh, no, they they this all weren't at it. And do you know they weren't at it though because we were at, we were in their faces from the first minute. Yeah. And I know they made a lot of changes and stuff, right? But they still had they still had a big big players in there that have played a lot of championship uh, football. So. It was by no means a weak inside. They've got a strong squad. Yeah, we'll hear from John McGlynn in a bit, but he got quite ratty when Lewis suggest, suggested about the big changes, but we'll hear that in a bit. Um, but yeah, a, a big penalty shout as well in that first half. Um, I didn't think at the time, but when you look back um, in the replay and the highlights of it, that that was definitely, for me, a handball. Um, referee missed that one. Uh, it was that was a, a handball and the, the one after it with Finn Yates got taken out. Yeah, I, I, I feel this season, well, not just this season, but last season, a lot of referees give teams more decisions than us. I don't know if that's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a conspiracy theory, but I mean, it goes back again to the standard of the referee, and we, you know, we've talked about it so many times, and certainly at this level as well, it's it's no great, is it? Why? Uh, I, I think we cool. Sorry, I was just going to say the ref didn't he bring his card out a lot on Friday, which is usually a good thing. But there was some horrendous challenges on Friday by mostly by the Thistle players, and he just he was he was just keeping his hand in his pocket. It was, yeah. it was so odd. No, absolutely. Um, I've got to, I've got to mention Stephen McGinn. Um, I just think that boy, and I think I've raved about him in here several times, but he just oozes so much class. He's an absolute Rolls Royce of a player. Certainly, that he should not be playing at the level he's playing at because you see the control and just the you know just the calmness. It's a player again. I've said it before. We've been crying out for this kind of player for years now, and it's just brilliant to see him that we've got him in the side. Because he just, with the experience, just takes a hold of that ball in midfield and just bosses it from there. I so so common in that. Eh? I mean, I played. I think he played over forty games for Kilmarnock in the Championship last season. So John McGlynn must have worked wonders to get him to the club. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So going into this half time, you know, you're you're looking at how we dominated that first half. And you think you're going to ruin the chances, but again. You, this all came out with a bit more urgency after half time, as you as you always would. But um, it, we, again, we we went into that second half. I, I didn't feel much threat at all. No, it was comfortable for the first minute to the ninety. It was comfortable. I didn't think Paddy Martin had anything much to do. I didn't think no. he had a... They they didn't have a shot on goal all, all ninety minutes, did they? No, I didn't. Actually, I was looking at I, I got. I, I took a copy of the the match statistics. I got it. I grabbed it off the BBC. And when you look back at it, you know it's it. Dear, here you go. Here, sixty percent possession for Falkirk. Fourteen shots to zero. Six shots on target to zero. And I mean that that tells you all you need to know about the game. Yeah, dominant, dominant, really well. Best yeah. start. Um, again, another point we've got to highlight, I think, as well, is Leon McCann. Um, you just know that you know they probably McGunn probably wants to get Mackey into that side but the way he's playing obviously set up the second goal great cross in and Oliver as well I mean he's been played really well in that midfield role that he's been given 
Um, good finish from him as well. Great cross from McCann. And you just can't see McCann coming out that side with that form that he's in. No, I mean, he's took his chance well uh, since Mackey came out the team, eh? Because Mackey, I mean, started the season on fire. That tackle against Hibs uh, was outstanding, eh? And uh, that's, worth, that's worth a mention on its own, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what Ross mentioned that last week. You said that's when all kind of, you felt that's where it started from, didn't you, Ross? Yeah, that commitment, the desire, the, the, you, you, you just sensed that night. That the that the players and the fans were going to have a bit of a connection this year. Um, the fans kind of responded to the. It's weird talking about a challenge, but it wasn't just the fact that he made a challenge. It was the determination. There's been a few examples of that as well. Callum Morrison in an earlier game has done something similar right in the last minute, and um, at a recent game. But you're right, Leo McCann was just absolutely tremendous again. He's undroppable. You can't. You no. just can't do it just now. And. That's probably evident in the fact that Mackey's not getting a sniff. And we know Mackey's a good player. McGlynn's had him at, at previous clubs, so knows he's a good player. But you just can't drop him. No, you're absolutely right. Oh, I came off the bench uh, as well. I mean, Burrow, he, he got taken off, but he'd rather have absolutely run. What a race he'd run. That he, he gave them all sorts of problems. But Oh, it's a, again a player that you just think... He's just a wee bit different from anything else that's on the part. And I think he'll surprise a lot of teams because people don't know what this boy's. You know, he's long, he's gangly. And, you know, he's obviously still, he's still a boy. Let's not be, but he still yeah. looks like a boy. But great chance from him. And you're like shouting, shouting, and, and then he hits it. And it, oh, I'm so unlucky to come off the post for him. He's, he's just, you know, he's got such good control for quite a tall guy. Um, the ball just kind of sticks to his feet. I'm just excited to see him for a bit longer. And yeah. it's difficult because you don't really want to drop anyone just now because of how well we're playing. Um, but I, I would like to see a bit more of him. Um, to That's see why I was I was play. wanting to see him on starting on, on Friday. I mean, again, we can't argue with, with John McGuinn and the, nope. obviously the team he put out there. But I just want, you like you say, you just want to see what can he do in 90 yeah. minutes, you know? I know. No, he was great. Andrew, what do you think? I know, uh, totally. I mean, some players are uh, quite good at that. Uh, they come off the bench and make an impact day, eh? and then when you, you cry out for them to start games, they disappoint you. Eh? They let you do me. Eh? <laughs> well, a, a guy that has started um, the last couple of games. Played, that's two ninety-minute games under the, the belt for Liam Henderson. Now, thought him and Cole Donaldson, unsung heroes. I thought their distribution from the back was outstanding. Cole obviously hitting the bar as well. I thought it was actually I'd put on our Twitter feed that it was uh, offside. I thought that's what given because like, I had the keepers not say that, but um, no, it was he had hit hit the bar. I thought him and um, Henderson at, in the centre defence. They played really well. And Henderson looked like he, he's starting to settle now and, and get, get that match sharpness and match fitness, Ross. Yeah, they absolutely strolled it. The two of them were such a good pairing. Again, you wouldn't really feel like dropping anybody to bring Mackie back in, who did well at centre. Yeah, yeah but, I was going to say, um, Mackie did really well, you know. He did. Um, I do think that I do think that's his favourite pairing. Um, I know Watson is still out injured. Yeah. Williamson's obviously still out injured. And... Um, but really, their chances of getting a game ahead of Yates, who does really, really well now. He's, I know he's not a natural right back, but he done massively well on, on uh, Friday night. He did. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, see, going back to the penalty shout with him, I actually think he didn't get it because he's a young lad, right? And I think the refs are seeing him getting, sometimes he'll get bounced off the ball show we shoulder charge, and it's not a foul, right? So see when, see when it happens in the box, I think they're going, oh, no, I just... It's not strong enough, Phil. But actually, see if it was a bloke or like an older guy, I think it would have been a pen. A genuine yeah. pen. It's a, it's a, yeah, absolutely. It's a good shout. It's an absolutely great shout. Um, so, yeah, and I'd appreciate it. I mean, overall, feelings on the match, guys. I mean, for me, it was just, it felt just really pedestrian and really, I mean, it feels like we're into. You know, I see some of the, the matches are coming on. You just hope we keep that momentum going, keep the wins coming, keep that feel-good facts in the club, go on that run that we talked about, you know. So when the next time that lot come to our place, you know, we've got all these wins behind us because it just feels that McGlynn has really built something there and we've got a style of football which is pleasing on the eye and just, you know, just great to watch and it, and it suits the team. So, I mean, I was just... Like again, Friday, just walking out, going, you know, and Ross said it as well. 
Steve McGinn just came off the off the the part and stubbed out his cigar in Ian McCall's hat because it was just it was just it felt <laughs> really really relaxed, didn't it? Very comfortable. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't need to wash his uh, shirt after the game anyway because he just strolled it. Aye. Yeah, that, you know, you're right, and it's, it is, it's just, it feels comfortable, and I don't like this feeling because it doesn't feel right. No, I know. But then <laughs> we've not been, we've not had this feeling for a few years, and don't get me wrong, we've we've had this feeling already this season where we think this is it, right, and then we had yeah, the Airbnb yeah. thing, we had the guilty thing, so I don't, I'm not, I'm a realist, and I think we all are, we're, we, we probably aren't going to win every single game between now and May, right? However, um, there is a feeling, there's a strong belief in the camp. You can feel it. There's a sense of um, togetherness between the punters and the, the team as well. You feel that kind of driving on every single game. I think the Dunfermline game massively helped. I know there's loads of critique about smoke bombs and flares and fans and all this kind of stuff. But actually, what a, what a day that was. And the only thing missing was the three points. And we took that into last Friday as well. Um, brilliant crowd on the night. What was it? Two, two, it seven, two, eight. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I know there was five or six hundred through for, for Mary Hill, which was good as well, but brilliant home crowd for that tournament. Um, and I, again, I think hopefully there's going to be 4,000 plus on Saturday for this Clyde game. The players deserve it. The management deserve it. And I think if we can get that kind of crowd in, what a, th- what a belief that'll kind of give the team as well that, do you know what, it's not a big game thing that we're turning up for. It's every week we're there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's hear from John McGuinn as he spoke to us. John, uh, to start things off tonight, um, Partick obviously made nine changes, I think, from the weekend, but still good players that came in. And I guess the opening question is, are you surprised at just how comfortable the victory was tonight? Well, they did make nine changes, but they've got a very strong squad. You know, it's a great squad they have. Uh, and I think it's a, a little bit harsh to open with that, because our team's actually played very well tonight. The team's played very well, and I'm not suggesting that their first 11, starting 11, best 11 would have would have won so convincingly and played so well. But nonetheless, I mean, like the lads Nedham was a top goalkeeper last year in the, in the championship, you know. Uh, Danny Mullen was scoring goals for Dundee in the Premiership last year. The lad Hudson won the league with Kilmarnock last year. Uh, Brannigan and Turner play most weeks, you know. Uh, Fitzpatrick has been playing bits and pieces of games, uh, you know, so... Right, Lad Brownley came in for them, who's, who's not been playing regularly. Akinola came in, who's played bits and pieces, not a lot. Uh, but, nonetheless, you know, our team played particularly well, and it was a complete performance. It was over the duration of the, the 90 minutes, from start to finish. I thought we were very dominant. We worked, the team worked extremely hard. We, uh, we pressed the ball really, really well. We retained possession well. We played the opening 30 minutes was like relentless, you know, for 30 minutes. And we had to take a little breather at that point because we ended up playing a little bit longer, giving the ball away a little bit. And uh, that allowed them in, but we probably needed to take a little breather because our foot was to the floor for 30 minutes and it's difficult to keep that going for, you know, for, for any longer, actually. Uh, and the, the intensity that we were playing. Uh, and it's a it's a good goal, you know, it's a really, really good goal and we had a lot of other opportunities called Donaldson's at the bar and McGuffey had a great opportunity, Ramar and did brilliantly down the right hand side, cuts it back to him and I don't know if he took too long on the ball or not but he's got a great opportunity to, to score and there was actually, you know, so many. Uh, delighted with the way our central defenders tonight, they were excellent, uh, they were good defensively and they were good on the ball. And at that point, the basically the lights got turned off in the stadium and they had to cut us off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I mean I think picking up from that um, complete performance is one two words he used in that. You can't argue with that. You know you highlight the whole team there really. As is is a good manager. I think we've got the right man for the job. And uh, it came what I like about John and Paul. They they're out at the park warming the players up. They're not just sitting in the dugout letting somebody else take them. They're they're, out, they're proper old school. They're, they're they're training with the players at the start of the game and that. And I like that. Eh? It's good to see that. Yeah. I, I agree, Andrew. And, and do you know what else is telling for that interview as well? He knows his stuff. See, when you listen back there, he, he knows the he knows the Thistle team. Now, bear in mind, this isn't 
Thistle's starting eleven that would have played last week, right? So even even though we know he would have watched their game last week from start to finish, he knows all about some of these players who've not been getting a game. Uh, he knows their backstory. He knows where how they how they play. That's exactly what we've been missing. And I don't want to I don't want to decry anybody else, right? But can you imagine listening to an interview where Martin Rennie or 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 one of the other guys that we've had recently knowing that level of detail, Kenny Miller would. They just they would not have known that level of detail. Yeah. Um, so I think that's absolutely brilliant. The fact that he can do that, he knows his stuff, and it's evident. And he'll be telling the players all this kind of stuff as well. Yeah, it's really telling. It's, it's a really good point because his, his knowledge of the game, obviously in Scotland, is, is, is incredible, and it is good to see a manager being a manager and getting out and coaching the players, isn't it? And you're right, Andrew, because we've not really had that. Someone that's you look at Rennie or you look at, you know, Sheen or, or whoever you want to look at, someone out there working with the players and telling them what to do. And we sit behind the dugout and you can just hear them, you know, and it, it was Once, a, a, couple, a couple of points on Friday, it was raging. I think especially when, um, who was it, somebody missed a chance and it was absolutely beeling, absolutely beeling. I think it was the McGuffey one, wasn't it? I think it was maybe the McGuffey one, See, yeah. the thing is, like, he was being tactful there in the interview. McGuffey, he did take too long, but he took too long because he tried to put it on his left foot. Yeah, and he does that too often, um, and he's not got a bad right foot as we've just said. He's he's scored with it before. Just put your laces through it, like we were, and I don't want to say like like if you were playing fives or something, you just leather the ball. He was he was seven yards for goal. Just absolutely melt it. Yeah. I yeah. can feel the frustration from John McLean coming tonight again. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, let's have a look at what uh, some of the, the other guys have been saying. To Homer says, simply well played. First 30 minutes, we blew them away. McGuffey should have had at least one goal. And Burrow again looked excellent. What a find he is. It's starting to come together, boys. Indeed. Uh, Peter says, what a performance. Everything seemed right. Set up and attitude was fantastic. Huge well done to the management, staff and players. This seems a big result onwards and upwards. Come on, you Bairns. Is, that a big, is this like a big result for us? Can, again, we've had a couple of false dawns this season, I would say. But, you know, is this, you know, Kelty and Airdrie are the ones that, you know, really stand out. Is, is, do you think this could be a, a real platform, Ross? I hope so. I hope so. Um, well, you're right. We've had a few kind of big results, like the Hibs game was was huge, um, but that Dunfermline game, I think, I think we've taken a huge amount of confidence from that Dunfermline are top of the league, been given it all this on social media. The managers have been, the management team has been talking about how well they've been doing. We went there in their own backyard and we outplayed them and outfought them for the majority of the game. So I think we've taken a huge amount of confidence for that and we've taken it in the thistle. And you know what? Let's take in a Saturday and let's put four or five past Clyde. Let's yeah. do it. I think it's it's coming. It feels it's coming. Andy says, good performance as a team. And all the Jags put out a weakened team. It's still a championship team as well. You heard John McGlynn's response to Lewis on that. Um, uh, you can only beat what's in front of you. Created so many chances and just need to work and convert a couple more during the game. I think someone will get a doing soon. So, yeah, that's what you're saying, Ross. Maybe Indeed. starts a yeah. Clyde. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, Garrett says, uh, sublime first half, controlled for the most part, second half. McGinn strolled the game. I don't know how he never scored multiple in the first 15 minutes. We had them on the ropes. Keep playing with that level of performance and we'll do well this season. Absolutely. Graham says, comprehensive win against a weekend championship side with a wee bit more adventurous play. We could have run up a big score. We're desperate for a right back and McGuffey isn't the best up front. Possibly best performance of the season? Question mark. Right back, I th I've seen Finn Yeats get a, a wee bit of criticism, I, I think, quite unfairly. I think he's fairly solid in that right back berth. I think it would be good, to, obviously, seeing what Williamson did before he got injured, to, for him to come back and have a natural right back in there. But I think Finn's done a, a, a relatively good job in there. I, I think uh, he has. I mean, the game uh, uh, the, down at Capolo, he played well. And that was his first ever because he's obviously a centre midfielder, eh? But uh, the worry is, well, it's only kind of area in the team that we've not got cover for because Ryan Williamson, he's been here two years and he spends more time on the treatment table than he actually does play. And some of the... I mean, he scored a great goal the, and unfortunately got injured. And how long will he be out for? That's a question mark, eh? 
Do you know the the club are that the club are really really good at getting sponsorships? Maybe they should sponsor the maybe Ryan Williamson should sponsor the treatment table. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know it's so fr- you're right though, Andrew. It's so frustrating. Like you, you were you were talking about um pulling your hamstring up at Cove. I bet you were back the week after. He wouldn't have been he'd have been out for three months. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh Kieran says excellent performance. Burrow, absolutely outstanding. Uh random ragged all night. McGinn, quality as per Henderson grown into the player. Um thought his passing was top. All in all, a good night. Yeah, pretty much what I've said. Miss Chandler Bond says, I think McGonagall has found his first 11 minus Martin and goals. Worryingly, our best right back at the club is a central midfielder. Outstanding. So there he goes. That's someone backing Finn. McCann and McGinn, first names on that team sheet. I would totally agree with that. Um, and the gaffer has worked wonders up to now. Surely it can only get better. It's that starting 11. I, for me, I, I don't know. I think all... It's, my question's probably over that starting 11. Uh, I don't think I can say over because I think he's done really, really well in midfield. I was questioning that before. McGuffey's the one where I would question. McGuffey's the one for me I would slightly question. It's, but I, what do you think, Ross? Is is that our starting 11? Maybe the goalkeeper, Nicky's in for Paddy. Yeah. But is, would that be the starting 11? Your starting 11? Hogarth in for Paddy Martin. I see what you're saying about McGuffey. I think um, he does, he's probably doing more good than not just now. Um, see until we see Lawal in terms of because obviously he comes on for McGuffey and he does make a difference when he comes on so that would be a change potentially but mm. I don't know how we would be starting the game I think did John McGlynn not say we were doing a bounce game uh, tomorrow oh, uh, I think so so he might get a chance to see Lawal in a starting position maybe I'll give him food for thought if he does really well I don't know who we're playing but it'll maybe give him food for thought ahead of the ahead of the weekend. But it'd be tough to drop someone. It would be tough. It would, it would be. I mean, I guess the another option would be if Williamson does ever come back from injuries, putting him in right back and moving Yeats back into, into midfield. But yeah, then McGuffey yeah. does offer you a, a decent attacking option, doesn't he? No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Matthew says, great performance again. Something really special has been built. Hendo and Cole at the back look solid. McCann is unreal. Oliver must play every game in central midfield. Nesbitt's improving, improving, beg your pardon, uh, along with the pace of Burrell and Cal, which would trouble any defence in the league. Absolutely. Nesbitt is another one you might question in the starting 11 again, maybe. Not just now, though. He's just his, his form. I, just I know. So... I can't, I'm just trying to pick holes when there's no holes to be picked. Does it? No. I don't know. That's what I'm yeah. doing. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Typical fault. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, John says, brilliant. We actually look like a football team again this season. Instead of 11 individuals running around on a pitch like last season, hopefully away to Linfield in the next round. You know how you feel about that, Ross? Well, yeah, they shouldn't be in the, they shouldn't be in the draw, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, as long as we don't get one of these B teams, I can't be bothered with them. I'd rather, right. I'd rather go and play a Linfield or some of these than a Celtic B or something, or Rangers right. B. That's brutal. Um, Although you could argue that Linfield are probably Rangers B in another name. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Wee Tam says, fantastic performance. McGuffey needs to come out. Uh, that team, no good for him. Uh, the possession was great at times and a little dodgy towards the end, uh, almost playing into our own goals and creating chances for Thistle. Why, Mackie, why is Mackie not getting any game time is the question from Wee Tam. I think it's just because McCann's done so well. You can't, drop, you can't drop any defence to bring Mackie in. And we saw, what game was it that they tried and it failed? I can't remember what game it was. Uh, no, Kelly, sorry. Kelty. Um, they tried to shoot Horniman when it wasn't, and it, then it didn't work. So, okay. mm-hmm. Right. David says, finally, get Burrow on a long-term contract. Come on, you Bairns. Here, you know here. what? If this is going to be the model for the club going forward... You know, maybe we start looking at someone like Burrow and start like thinking because you know we know the the model is to to try and get players and get them on contract and sell them on because that was the model that worked really well for us beforehand. So yeah. would you take a punt and getting Burrow tied up, or you just give him another couple of months and getting them tied up in a longer ton- contract and then maybe sell them? Uh, Burrow, I know because remember. Uh, when we had the academy, we, we had Scott Arfield, we had uh, Jay Fulton, uh, all the boys, Craig Sibyl, as you talked about earlier on in the show, uh, and we made good money. And it's, 
it's good if we could get somebody like for the, the local area through because you're right it's always good to have one a local lad in your team eh? one of your own eh? like Greg Sibyl was mm. no listen you're absolutely right Andrew and hopefully that's that that pathway is at least the, like there again for that to potentially happen like there's a lot of chatter about uh, we Pierce Carroll I think he's going to he's going to be great uh, at some point for us as well you see glimpses of him um, in terms of Burrow do you know what we've seen so far is definitely worth a punt. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I don't think anyone's talking about a Jim McLean special, what, what, a five-year contract with a seven-year option or anything like that. But right. I think if uh, you get, you would give him another year if he's only if he's only uh, in contract for till the end of the season. Yeah, I'd be giving him at least another year. Yeah, because you don't what you don't want to see is obviously if it, again, I guess it all depends on where we end up. But you're going to have to take a gamble at some point with these these guys because. If come the end of the season, then these guys have been playing well, and then you're losing them. You know, you know it's been fine in previous seasons, but we've not had some great quality yeah. in that side. It's been like cheerio, open, don't let the, the door hit your arse on the way back. But <laughs> yeah, but um, I when you look at some of the players, you go, mm, well, it's maybe worth a punt because they might be you know develop into players that we can then look at selling on at a de- decent amount of money interesting interesting yeah, yeah. we'll see that as the, the season continues right okay let's go for first of all your folk at daft rated from the game against this old ross uh has to again for the second week in the bounce i'm going to say ramen burrow thought it was outstanding well, andrew uh leon mccann leon mccann yeah again set up the goal good game for him I'm just going to go for Stephen McGinn then, just to be different. I think Burrow probably deserves it, but Stephen McGinn, I just I love that guy. I love that guy. Um, <laughs> what about a Falcon Dafty? Have we got one? I've got one. Go if on. We're being, if we're being harsh, I think McGuffey for the miss, um, because I know it was only a few minutes before we scored, but um, that's football sometimes, and you don't part it then run up the, run up the park and score, and then the game is different. I think he should have scored there. I think he's he's... He's too often trying on his on his best foot. Um so for me I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna go with Craig McGuffey for this week. Andrew, you got anyone? No, I know particular, but I would I would say the same as uh, Ross just for McGuffrey's miss, because uh, it could the game could have swung different, but it didn't, they? so that was the main thing. Poor Craig McGuffey, full house for him this week. Oh, so, <laughs> sorry, Craig, sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, like you say, I, I mean, it's probably one that I, he's a good player, McGuffey. He really is. But um, I just needs to. I don't know. I just need something a bit more about him. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what. He'll it probably is. go in and score a wonder goal on Saturday. Of course he will. I, actually, I maybe put a shit. We'd not mention Callum Morrison, but I thought actually, he, you know, he had a bit of a chicken night on um, Friday. There was a lot of opportunities where he was. He took for the goal. He took the right one when he just like I thought, oh god, because there was two or three where he'd cut inside and blooned one over the bar. And when he actually scored the goal, he was like, don't, don't you dare! And he actually put it out to McCann on the left for the the cross for the for the second goal. But um, I, I Morrison wasn't a bro. He, he was he was okay. He was okay. But it was like those chances where he just cut inside and ballooned it over the bar. He was definitely having a chicken night on Friday. <laughs> I would say. Uh right. Well, listen, to Andrew. Thanks so much for coming on and being our guest pundit this week, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, John and Ross. Good one. Cheers, Andrew. Thank you very yeah, much. Bye. Remember, if you want to be like Andrew, come on the show. You can drop us a DM on Twitter, Facebook, or email us at falkirkdaftpod at gmail.com. This is Falkirk Daft. Right, we're continuing the big question this week. We loved this chat last week, so we're continuing this week. What is your random counter with a Falkirk player? We're loving this chat, loving this chat. We are, we are. So we uh, let's go straight to your responses on this. A few we did get to last week and a few extra ones that have come into the mix. Uh, Martin says, a work colleague was on his holiday in Mallorca and went out for a morning run. He bumped to An- into Arno Riera. I just spoke about Arno Riera. We are, Riera. We are. Uh, owned or still owns a hotel out there what he's a gary neville of uh, mallorca there is he <laughs> i love that riera owns a hotel i'm definitely booking there uh when he told me um, he was from scotland he mentioned he used to play football for falkirk small world big riera oh, I, I, I used I actually had his name in the back of my top he was he was a cracking midfielder wasn't he um chig says we're working in amsterdam in early noughties 
uh, on one flight out, I noticed Evo then beaming get on board and uh, sit near the front. And once landed, he was waiting on me at the gate as he noticed the Falkirk top in the middle of the plane. He chatted to me through password control and exit. What a gentleman. So he is an absolute, I've met Evo before and he is an absolute gent of a man. Love, love, I mean, for a five, you know, for a, he is probably, you know, when you look at uh, X Fifers playing for Falkirk, he is the one that everyone. You know, because he's a, a Dunfermline, let's not get it wrong, he's a Dunfermline no, hero as, as well as a fox. Was, no, he was a massive Dunfermline legend. Obviously scored against them at East End Park, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I celebrated it as well, so. Loved, yeah, I love, loved Big Evil, loved Big Evil. Um, John says, Russell Latape, and it's shock horror. It's a fag story. John says, Russell Latape, outside the old orange phone shop in the town. He asked for a light for his fag, was starstruck, and stood there and said, nothing for I use my lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. The, the only shock there is that Pedro was never a fag with him. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Diggy says James Cregan, uh, David Lloyd, Jim in Edinburgh, and Charlie Telfer with his Falkirk beanie hat on outside his dentist <laughs> office. He also, saw Fareed, <laughs> he also saw Fareed and Lewis Toshney, do you remember him, in TGI Fridays. That's a random pairing to be in TGI Fridays, isn't it? <laughs> Fareed and Lewis going for a fight in TGI Fridays. Amazing. Wow. I, lo- I love stuff like this. Uh, Graham says, in my fourth year at uni during our sports fair during fresh weeks, I asked Tim Crow if he fancied trying out for an American football team. He wasn't tempted and went off to speak to the cheerleaders instead. Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> Proper Dutchman, did he? Uh, Harry says, uh, I seen Robbie Butch heading to Temple after we got humped 6 <laughs> 0 by Queen's Park. I've, I've never, I have to say, it is what Martel, like that was that was our club, Ross. Martel, I've never ventured into Temple, though. One of my mates no. did, they were absolutely steaming and went in, and they were the oldest pair in there. And they were just like, This is not for us, and watched straight back out. <laughs> but Robbie's in there, Robbie's in there, so there you are. Uh, Stu says, Not a Falkirk player, but met. Dwight York and Roses with Russell Latape was pretty mental. I was DJing at a club in Edinburgh and Russell, it was when Russell was playing for Hibs and he came into the club with Dwight York and they came up and asked for requests. We were asking for reggae music and it was like a cheesy chart thing. I was like, no, sorry boys. I had to turn down Russell Latape for a musical request. Oh, that's shame on you. That was pre Bayern, so if, 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 if I had, oh, well, if had played for Falkirk at the time, I'd be, okay, Russell, what did you want? Yeah. Bob Marley? On you go. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Stuart says my mates and I end up drinking and smoking cigars with God himself <laughs> on Friday night in Harry's Bar in Edinburgh. He was injured so couldn't play the next day and was unimpressed by my tale of own football injury, which was a dead leg. Was that Ryan Williamson? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine having a cigar. That would be a cool moment when you're sitting to having a cigar oh, with Simon oh, Steinrod. Steinrod. You would just end what? it there. Harry's Bar must be a haunt for Falkirk players because I was in Harry's Bar once and Kevin James was sat two, uh, t- two uh, seats down from him. I said hello to him. There you there go. So go. Harry's Bar for all your Falkirk uh, player needs. Uh, Stephen said, played fives two weeks running with Ryan Flynn. Took my camera with me, much to his embarrassment. Danny Mallow and Riera and McDonald's after a night out in Edinburgh. And I met Big Enoch in George Street, Edinburgh and said bye to him while singing his song. Oh, can you imagine that? Just serenading him down... I'm sure you loved that. I'm sure you loved that. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, Danny uh, Mallow uh, and Riera and McDonald's. There you go. <laughs> there we go. And then last but not least, David says, a drunk Tony Parks hit on two of my girlfriends on late buses out of town back in the day. Just before I go on, why has he got two girlfriends? I don't know. David's a player, clearly. <laughs> yeah. And they were also on the same bus. I, I don't know. This is a weird story. Uh, sat with He also sat with Colin Samuel in the takeaway queue at Pizza Hut at the retail park late one Friday night. He started for Dundee United the next day. Consummate athlete. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely love these absolutely love these listen if you I have got more just keep them coming in we'll keep we'll have a different big question next week but please keep your random encounters because they're making me laugh absolutely <laughs> get in touch on all our social channels at Falkirk Daft this is Falkirk Daft every week on Falkirk Daft we would like to look ahead to our next game and it is at the stadium this weekend Saturday 3pm against Clyde and on from the Clyde official podcast, it's Paul Shanks. How are you doing, Paul? Yeah, good, John. Thanks for the introduction. Um, hopefully I'm still feeling positive uh, come 5pm Saturday, but who knows, given our, our recent run of form. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've just come off the back of a victory against Camarfin. Is that how you pronounce it? Camarfin. There you go. Yeah. In, no, in the cup, um, last minute winner there from Big Ray Grant. Uh, however, on the end of the week, Paul, it's not quite happening on the park this this season. You've lost the last four, I believe, sitting on seven points there, languishing near the bottom of the table. What's been happening at Clyde this season? Well, uh, that's that's the big question over the last few weeks, to be honest, John. It, it, the first three games, we should have been nine points from nine. Um, we were playing some, I can't believe I'm saying this, scintillating attacking football. Um, <laughs> the goals for Colum probably tells its story. We went down to Palmerston on opening day. I don't think many gave us a, a hope in hell, quite frankly, um, of getting anything from that game. But 4-1 didn't flatter us. Um, we followed that up um, with our first home game of the season, uh, and that was the first real disappointment. We should have won that game 4 or 5 now, quite frankly, against Peterhead. However, a mad five minutes, we conceded two sloppy goals, and that theme will be a recurring discussion point for myself, talking about other games this season, and it cost us two points. We then followed that up with a very comfortable 3-0 victory to Kelty and we're thinking well the sky's the limit here we're, we're looking great solid at the back and then it all just started unraveling and it was a slow unravel at first um away to FC Edinburgh a game that again on chances created we certainly should have picked up something however you defend the way we did for the two goals you're not going to pick up many points in this league Thereafter, it just got a wee bit ugly. Um, the Alawa game in particular, the the defending is whatever the opposite of textbook is. Um, <laughs> it was horrible, horrible stuff. Um, ironically, we the, the Erdry game last week as well, 5-0, I think on paper, you look at it and go, that was a pasting. But see, for 65 minutes to 70 minutes, there wasn't much in the game at all. If anything, the, the second goal came at a point where we were on top and looking more likely to score. And then it all just went to the wall. I mean, we, the defending for the, the second, third, fourth and fifth was... Uh, you want to bleach your eyeballs after? I'm sure Danny's been tearing his hair out um, thinking about it. So we were probably quite happy to have that break with the SPFL Trust game against Carnarvon last week. It gave us a chance to maybe strip things back to the start of the season. We'd changed our shape as well. And I know a lot of Clyde fans were concerned about that. We'd been doing well with the four at the back. We went to a three. It just didn't seem to be to be working with the personnel that we had. We've got four very capable centre halves now. Um, granted, they're some of them in the twilight of their careers. Yeah, I, can't, I mean, I still can't believe Brian McQueen, 37 now. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately with Brian, it's the pace is the issue. The, the the football and brain, and he can read the game fantastically, and he's a leader. You could tell that early doors. And in the four, it, it was fine. Him and Peter Grant, Peter Grant as well. I don't think it's unfair to say he's not blessed with Usain Bolt's pace or, or anything like that. However, he's very good at reading the game. But what we needed then was was two very fit, pacey kind of fullbacks to cover in for them. And we went to the five, it just wasn't working. We were getting cut open. And when I say cut open, it was generally a simple ball over the top and we self-destructed in quite comical fashion at times. So last week it gave us a, a an opportunity, as I said, just to kind of strip it back, go back to basics. First of all, make ourselves difficult to beat again. Um, Danny's very good at making us difficult to beat over the years when things have been going somewhat downhill. Um, we, we, we played well enough, but I don't think many Clay fans are are saying we've turned the corner just yet. Um, the proof will be in the pudding come Saturday. Yeah, um, so defence is really where, it, where it's at in terms of the problems, Paul, then this season. you Up front, um, who have you got that's going to threaten us well, uh, for ourselves, we've, we've got plenty of goals in this team. That's the the madness. Um, even last uh, the last league game, not last week, I should say, um, against Airdrie, we should have scored three or four. Um, 
two, at least two in each half. But uh, the main threat, without wanting to give away too much of our game, is Ross Cunningham, um, the top goal scorer. He's got seven from the 11 games he's played this season. He's on a bit of a, a dry spell at the moment because um, he was seven from seven at the start of the season. So um, if we get the service to Ross, um, you really want him not playing with his back to goal. You want him running at defenders. And when he's on form, he, he's borderline unstoppable. He's very, very good, Ross. It's just making sure you keep him in the game, keeping that, that service to him. Over and above that, we've got Jordan Allen as well. And I know he did play a small part in the League Cup game against Falkirk uh, back in July. Jordan's second top goal scorer, I think now he's got three and a couple of assists to his name. He's been more of a, a bit part player for ourselves, but very, very capable. Um, even from the bench to come on and, and, and get you a goal from nothing. He's a, he's always one of those kind of well runners. If you need to put the ball into a channel, he'll chase it down. So yeah, I think the, the threat's a bit more spread than what most Falkirk fans will be used to in, in recent years from Clyde. We've obviously normally had one figurehead up top that would get 90% of our goals. That's not the case anymore. There's, there's, there's threat throughout the team. Uh, even if I look at young Ewan Cameron, he's a kind of attacking midfielder, can play up top, can play out wide. He's got a couple of goals this season as well, perhaps surprisingly so. Um, I don't think a lot of Clyde fans knew much about him. So I'm hoping the threat is more than just two or three prongs. We've, we've got enough, I think, from a counter-attacking perspective, we can be deadly. Um, and I think that's probably going to be the game plan come come Saturday. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that. Uh, I have to ask, obviously, about the, the Goodwill situation since you sort yes. of brought up there. What has been the feeling from the Kite supporters? I, I, and what is the current situation? He's not, is he still on the books of the club? I, it's all no. very. So he's still a Wraith player. He's, he, he always was after the... Because he was meant to be coming league. back, wasn't he? He was meant to be coming back. And then obviously the whole stadium situation Yeah. as a result so, of that. Yeah, I'd obviously I need to be mindful of what I say. Yeah. Um, the, the club have very much taken the position that we, we need to move on. Um, he did initially sign on loan uh, after signing for Wraith and the kind of fallout, etc. from that. Um, following our uh, temporary signing on loan for the remainder of last season, North Lanarkshire Council made their decision um, regarding that position and it obviously then forced their hand with relocation. Um, so it's it's strange because it's it's been the catalyst for something that the club needed to do for the long-term health and benefit of the club in the relocation side. However, there was a large degree of uncertainty um, towards the end of last season, which didn't help on the park as well as off it. But the the directors and all the volunteers at the club, to the credit um, of them, managed to, to steer us through it fairly well. Um, obviously, there's it's a highly emotive subject um, and with regards to David. Um, nobody can see on the park that it wasn't fantastic. Everyone knows the type of footballer he was and then how good he could be. There was a lot of baggage, um, whatever your position is on David. So, yeah, the club are very much now, even come this, this summer, there was calls of, do we, do we go down that route? Again, a lot of fans wanted us to, and a lot of fans didn't. Um, it's probably a, a quite even split, and I, I don't think most appreciate that. I think there's still a very kind of fifty-fifty element of the Clyde fans that that would have or wouldn't have him back. It's yeah, as we say, it's about drawing the line on it now. Um, he was he was great for the club on the park. I firmly believe that we were very good for him off the park. Um, but yeah, as, as far as that goes, we thank him for his, his contribution. However, we now need to look at the long-term future of the football club. No club um, is smaller than one player, or no player is bigger than one club, as the, the saying goes. Um, and we've got to, 
to now really look to to make a name for ourselves and hopefully back in the, the East End of Glasgow. Paul, see, see just on that, so obviously yeah. I have a couple of um, good friends who are Clyde fans and I think they do a lot of volunteering at the club and stuff as well. They, they were saying the move to Hamilton has actually yeah. been like a really, really good move. Oh, it's been phenomenal. Phenomenal, Ross. Um, I could not say enough good words about the folks at Hamilton Ackies. Um On a match day, they literally turn it into a Clyde Stadium. Everything from removing posters in the wall or pictures in the wall and they'll put up Clyde-related stuff. It is our stadium on that day or any day that we will be using it. The the atmosphere on a match day and it's something that it hopefully um, when you come to New Douglas Park, you'll see it firsthand. Just it's a, it's a different fan experience there now. Um, Broadwood had its, its positives, but I don't think it's unfair to say it had far more negatives. The coldest and I'm not stadium just, in the world, Paul, it's the actual coldest stadium in the world, oh, Broadwood. <laughs> look, I, I, I stay not too far away from it. And I mean, I've got a zipper on and I'm in the house with the heating on. So you can take from that what you will. Switch your heating on, for God's sake, you mad! Aye, well, <laughs> I've not told the wife. She's an accountant. She's probably like, get a spreadsheet for it. But um, yeah, so it, the, the Hamilton Ackies have just been brand new with us. Even down to, it's a five-year lease that we've initially got. However, that can be stopped after three if we are in a position with that, the relocation that, that, plans that, to move to our own place. Because um, obviously you're, you're looking to move into the Gallagher at Crown Point Park. Yeah. Is, is that something you want to see happen, Paul? Obviously, I mean, because it is just like you're the nomads of Scottish football, like <laughs> like let us lost Hobo moving from stadium to stadium. Yeah. Um, is that something you would, you would, you know, celebrate if you moved back into the East End of Glasgow? Is that something you... you for you and I guess the rest of the Clyde supporters that you'd embrace? 100%, 100%. It's been probably what Clyde fans wanted from the second that they moved out of Glasgow. Um, they just wanted to go back. Now, you can call Broadwood a failed experiment, if you will. Um, it was a long experiment, it was 28 yeah. years. Um, but I think a lot of thing people fail to remember is Clyde haven't owned their own stadium since 1930. Or the 1930s, we sold Shawfield um, to the uh, Greyhound Association. And from then, Clyde have never owned their own stadium. So it's near on 100 years since we were in full control of our own destiny. And that's what hopefully um, Crown Point uh, will provide us, assuming that everything goes smoothly. Um, the, the mechanics of that are fairly complex and again I need to be wary of what from what I know and um, what I can obviously say publicly without de derailing the application process so um but yeah we are very very keen on it um and I'm hoping that the Glasgow City Council are very keen to have us the the benefit that it will have is it's in our heartlands it's a mile away from Shawfield if even that just the other side of the river it's it's just that wee bit closer to the, the spiritual home, if you will. And we're hoping that once we are there, people will enjoy going to an away game at Clyde because I don't think many have enjoyed it in recent years. It's interesting though, it's like, cause obviously you, for a club like Clyde, you build up your fan base, I guess, around the Cumbernauld area. You know, and it's now trying, I guess, almost develop a whole new fan base um, and, and still bringing with you those existing supporters that you've gained from from that area. It's just, it's a real minefield, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it wouldn't be Clyde if it wasn't. Um, <laughs> it, that's, that's, it's almost a summer thing. If it's not having to rebuild a whole new squad, it's, let's see how unsettled we can make ourselves off the park. But it, this this time, it's almost that this is it. This this has to be it. We have to get this right because ultimately, if we don't, what is the longer term future of the football club? Yeah. So. Well, listen. Short term future is uh, at the stadium this yep. Saturday. Um, what are you thinking? What do you think the score is going to be? 
Um, I would take a goalless draw, quite frankly. Um, 14 to 5 the draw, 14 to 5 I've got. It's down for oh, that. Right, okay. Um, I would have that bit longer myself, to be honest. But anyway, um, no, like for, for ourselves, if we can get back to being good defensively, that we have to be. Um, I think you've only not lost one game at home this season. I think it was at Montrose, and you've Bridge, won every other, yeah. every home game. So the, the task is, is sizable for ourselves. I don't think that will be lost on Danny Allen and and the players. I think we are capable um, of coming and, and upsetting uh, you guys on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, complete bogey team. I mean, let's face facts, Ross. Over quite years, a, yeah. Quite have been a bogey team for us for years. Yeah, it's been but, yeah, it's been a frustration. <laughs> I've enjoyed it personally. Um, <laughs> you will have. Yeah, will have. <laughs> at the same time, I think last year you look at it with with the Boxing Day fixture, we were. We won two one. I, I don't think we can say we fully deserved that. Um, but then I think it was another fixture. You cuffed us three now. Possibly it was three going on a few more. Um, so yeah, I, we're capable of anything. That's the thing. We, we could turn up on Saturday and and win two one or two nil or whatever. Or if we defend the way we have been in certain moments it could get ugly because you're very capable now you seem to be finding the net um I, i've noticed your result during the week albeit it was against our um our good friends from mary hill so i was um it raised a smile when i saw the full-time score at the same time it made me slightly nervous uh, ahead of saturday but yeah if if you were pushing me i'll go to one clyde i'll go yeah, to one clyde. ross what are you going for um, just as Paul said, we're obviously doing quite well at home, so um, I think I'd hope for a couple of goals and a and a clean sheet. So I'm going to go two 0 Burns. All right, okay. I'm. I, I think I'm sorry to say, Paul. I think we're due someone are doing really, really <laughs> soon. The chances have been created, so I'm, I'm going to go for the three 0 Falkirk. But um, like you say, I think we, we, if you're saying about the defence, if it's going to be Brian and, and Peter both playing there in the centre half, we know. From a personal, uh, the pace that those guys have, especially Brian being 37. Now, if that's going to be a set of half pain, I've got a funny feeling we could get in behind that with the um, yeah. man Burrow. So I'm, I'm going to say 3 0. I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. It's, it's completely lo logical as well. So I can't really argue <laughs> much again, to be honest. So, um, when is, look, being a football supporter, when's logic ever come into it, though? Come on. Oh, never. <laughs> if logic came into who I supported, I mean, I've certainly <laughs> went wrong somewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, thank you so much for joining us in Folk Dad. Really good to get an insight. And I mean, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I hope you do find, you know, Clyde are a great football team. You've got well support. And I know a lot of, a lot of Clyde supporters, you know, randomly. And I just hope you know, as a football copies, can really find that home and call it a home and get and get settled and, and bounce on from there. No, absolutely. Thank you very much. And it's it's great to be on the other side of these shows. And I'm normally hosting them myself, so it's always good to be on the other other side of the mic, so to speak. So thanks very much, and, and all the best for the rest of the season, other than Saturday and the obviously, other occasions. Obviously, of course. Right, of course. Right. <laughs> thanks, Paul. All right. Thanks very much. This is Falkirk Daft. So that is it for Folk at Daft for this week. Thank you very much for listening or watching us on YouTube, which of course you can do. Uh, we'd love to hear your reviews. Please subscribe, rate, review. Uh, subscribe below, subscribe below, like, follow, yay. Do all that. Please do that. <laughs> uh, and tell your friends, you know what? See, I've noticed, Ross, I've noticed this. We've got 3,000 people in that stadium every week and only 1,000 odd people. Well, in fact, it's about 1,500 are listening to Falk at Daft, which means there's 1,500 of you out there that aren't listening. Get and it. plus, we've got, our friends, we've got our friends abroad as well listening to it, so there's more of you not listening. So tell your pals there's a Falk at podcast that they can listen to as we give our views on the football. And you can be on it and everything. Great. <laughs> tell your pals. And you can hear John Rand. Yes, you can. Um, and remember, we've got a Discord channel as well. It's been a bit quiet on there recently, actually. I wanted to see what's happening. Uh, but you can get involved. It's like just a, a channel, that, a, a chat group, and you can talk about Falkirk, do whatever you want on that. So that is all on the links below. Um, and remember, we're always looking for sponsors. You know, we, we love doing this, Ross. We love doing this, but I'd love to get paid for doing it as well. So uh, if you want to sponsor the podcast, that would be great. Please drop us an email at gmail.com or you can DM us on any of our socials. Right, 
Clyde's next, Ross. League, back to league. Three. What are we thinking? Uh, honestly, I, I think you're right. I think someone is going to do a few goals off us. Um, there's no reason why it couldn't be Saturday. Um, Clyde, change, have... you, think, you think you're any change in the Dickey coming no. back in? No. Uh, well, other than the keeper, I think it'll be the same team. It's started on Friday night, uh, unless there's obviously an injury or something. But um, Allegra might be back in the squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, we d- William seems to be a mystery, doesn't he? Yeah, that's, there's I, the, the interview with John McGlynn suggested there's maybe something else going on there as well. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're reading too much into it, but it certainly didn't sound always well between the two of them. So, um, but no, I think there'll be a, I, I think there'll be at least a couple of goals on Saturday. Hopefully more. Yeah, well, absolutely. Listen, we'll, we'll see you down there at Stadium on Saturday. And until next time on Falkirk, Davros, Wayne. Expect the unexpected jump. Damn right. <laughs>